you got your composition kind of worked out or your idea anyway? Yeah, I'm thinking of like doing this yellow house with the blue sky in the background kind of coming around and then getting the tree and some of the crosswalk coming in the front. And you are working on, what is this? Is this a eight by eight panel? This is an eight by eight panel, yeah. This is a cool little portable palette here. Yeah, it's the Yugo palette. It's like really compact, so I like that. I, like, I want to be able to take it like camping and stuff and then be able to fit it in my backpack. So um, yeah, it's nice and small. All right, and I'm thinking of making something of this scene right here. I like these buildings and kind of the view down the street. So I got my Anderson easel today and I'm gonna be painting on a 14 by 14 inch panel using Liquid Original as my medium and my usual palette of colors. I'm gonna to try to capture the light that's on the front of these buildings. So having, you know, having the panel toned a warm color is gonna be really helpful. Do you pre-tone your panel too? Yeah, I toned it with um, like a, I think it was like a burnt sienna and a burnt umber kind of mixed together. So it's neutral, a little warm, neutral tone. Um, yeah, and then I've just done the house is what I'm capturing here. Um, there'll be the tree, um, the light coming in over here on the, I guess the driveway area, and then this uh, light post too. Okay, so doing my usual thing here regarding the sketch. Just started out with big shapes and now doing some refinement. All right, so I'm gonna make up a dark mixture here using ultramarine and alizarin crimson. Mixing in some liquid. getting it done over here. <laughs> oh, I like your sky too, how you graded the sky. Yeah. So did you go with like ultramarine up top down to more of a cerulean down below? Um, yeah, I have more ultramarine at top and I'm actually using a cobalt teal, which I really like for making super bright skies. I put just a tiny bit of that with the titanium white. And, oh yeah. And a little bit of Naples yellow. And I think it really makes it pop. Yeah, you've got beautiful light right over that tree, for sure. Thanks. Yeah, it looks good. You were talking about like capturing some reflected light under here, is that right? Yeah, well, so I'm noticing some light reflecting back up from the sidewalk and from the house itself. It's making the shadow pretty warm. I think it's really beautiful. I know it's getting probably some of the blue sky too, so it might be a little bit, it might lean green. So I might try a little orange. I might try green also. Yeah. And just kind of like, I'll take the, the yellow that I'm using and kind of just tweak it in one direction or the other. and. and and see which one works. I'm using the scene for inspiration, but ultimately I'm trying to get a good painting out of this or a good, you know, good composition. So I'm not trying to stay exactly true to what I'm seeing. One other thing I've done that's kind of helpful is there's a vanishing point right here. So I know that when I'm gonna sketch in my windows, I'll just kind of sketch towards that vanishing point. Christina's finished here. Yeah, I might touch it up in the studio a little bit, but um, I think for the most part, I'm happy with the general shapes and how everything's working out. All right, so I got a new portable watercolor palette here and I wanted to have more area for mixing colors. And then also I wanted um, bigger trays for the paints or pans, I think they're called. So I'm pretty sure these are full pan, uh, whereas my old palette, it's just half pan. And sometimes when using a larger brush, it's just nicer to have, uh, you know, the full pan. Also with this palette here, I've loaded all the colors myself using these tube watercolors and I just squeeze them out and let them dry 20, you know, for 24 hours. This one has more room for paint, more room to mix, and actually it's quite a bit lighter too. And I am using Winsor & Newton student grade paints here. These are Cotman paints and I actually bought a big tube of ultramarine. Uh, as you can see, that's the color I use the most. I'm just gonna take this tube paint and actually squeeze it in here. I'll just set this in the sun to dry. I actually added some yellow too. I seem to use a lot of yellow as well. All right, so here is what I finished up with. 
and I sort of fell back into my old habits of just painting a pleasant scene and not really building the composition around uh, strong, simple shapes. Uh, so this painting took a lot longer than normal and I couldn't really film the end of the process because I was running out of light and I was definitely in a hurry. Uh, but anyway, I did decide to include some some of this sort of dappled light on the street here. I'm happy with the painting. It's just not the type of painting I've been wanting to do lately, which is just like building a painting on strong, simple shapes. All right, so here's last week's painting, so you know what I'm talking about. Um, there's like one big shape here, one big shape here, sky shape, sky shape, and then the shape of the road. Uh, this gives me a lot of freedom, you know, because I can just work into these shapes and just suggest some detail, but I don't have to like render everything. All right, so I'm gonna try to make something of this scene right here. I'm gonna be painting on a 14 by 14 inch panel. I've got my usual palette of colors here. I've got a couple of new brushes today, uh, both natural bristle flats, a number eight and a number six. I quickly just sketched out some of the big shapes. We've got buildings in the foreground here. Um, and then these are buildings in the distance these as well obviously the road uh, running up through the center or like off to I guess it's about at a third and then the bridge so there is a lot of detail out there but I'm just gonna try to simplify as much as possible and I have moved some things around like for example um, this tower of the bridge right here is actually like right here but uh, compositionally that's kind of a problem so I decided to move it over a little bit and doing my usual thing of starting out with big shapes and then refining those shapes so my objectives here today are to have a nice design and then also a convincing feeling of light all right so I'm mixing up a dark using ultramarine blue and some burnt sienna and a touch of alizarin crimson. Now that the big shapes are in place, I'm just uh, breaking down the scene into light and dark. And as I mentioned, the most important thing is, at least in the beginning of the process, the most important thing is having an interesting light and dark pattern. And it doesn't have to stay true to actually what I'm seeing. I'm just using the scene uh, as inspiration and so after I get things blocked in, I'm going to walk back about 10 feet or so and, you know, 10 feet up the hill. It's actually a rather steep hill that I'm, uh, you know, set up on here. But anyway, I'm going to walk back and then just see if I like the overall design. So we've got the dark buildings in the foreground here, dark street. This is the whole shadow shape here. And I've kind of connected things down below here because there's a tree here and a tree here and having a gap in there, I didn't really like that. All right, so for the sky, I'm using a mixture of titanium white and phthalo blue. And it's nice to establish a value for the sky. Phthalo is really nice because it's got a lot of tinting power. So you can have a, a light value or a high value, but also um, decent saturation. I may put some ultramarine in here later, but for now, just kind of blocking in approximate colors. For the distant mountains, I'm using uh, the same mixture, but I'm mixing in a bit of dioxazine purple and then just some of this dark mixture right here. All right, so for the water, I'm using titanium white, uh, phthalo blue, and a bit of burnt sienna and also uh, yellow ochre. And again, looking for value relationships here. So uh, I feel like I might darken that water a bit more just to get, you know, a brighter effect on the buildings. Like I said, I'm just approximating right now. So I'll start with this. Oh, thank you. Thank you. All 
All right, so I feel like the shape in the foreground here needs to be darker. Uh, the darkest part of the scene actually is this shadow shape right here. Uh, and I do like the fact that, you know, there'll be the highest contrast right here. So that'll kind of lead the eye down into the composition. Uh, but this definitely needs to be darker. You can see the value between the buildings right here and the water are kind of very similar. And there are the shadows right there. Now, if I keep them as dark as that, it's gonna to draw too much attention and be too heavy in the foreground. So I'm just mixing in a little titanium white into my dark mixture here. And I wanna keep the brush strokes visible in this area to keep some transparency so it doesn't feel too thick and heavy. And then this shape will just be broken up with little suggested windows and fire escape, that sort of thing. Because I, I don't want a lot of detail. It'll draw too much attention. Uh, and I want to keep the eye going into the composition. All right, so now I'm mixing a color for the dark portion of the trees. And this is ultramarine, cadmium yellow medium, and some burnt sienna. <laughs> Okay, so at this point I've walked back and I just, I see there's like kind of a problem area right here. Uh, I do have some trees to work with. I'm gonna, you know, like kind of exaggerate those trees. I do feel like it's sort of drawing, this light down here is drawing attention away from this area. This is the most important area right here. So, so I think I'll just add kind of a tree shape right in here like that and then maybe I'll bump this tree up a little bit higher so that these are all trees and I, I need to keep the shapes irregular okay that's better but I want this tree I think I want this tree to come up higher even Maybe even right off the top of the buildings, like that. Yeah, that's kind of a better shape like that. I think that works. All right, so I've mixed up a variety of warm and cool uh, whites, basically. I mean, just very light value. This one's kind of pink here moving more towards yellow and orange and then one that's got kind of a bluish tint to it almost like this blue green almost so i want these buildings to be pretty bright in here and i'm also going to try to leave some of the uh, burnt sienna coming through as well little bits of that orange all right so i'm mixing up a darker color for the water using ultramarine phthalo blue and a touch of this transparent yellow oxide, also some titanium white. And I'm darkening the water so that I get more contrast uh, because I wasn't getting enough of a light effect on the buildings. All right, so here is what I finished up with. And I tried to focus on big shapes. So there's the building in the foreground here, or it's actually a couple of buildings, uh, but it's basically one shape divided by a little bit of suggested detail, just like these, you know, buildings in the distance here. It's more or less one shape, also broken up with a little bit of suggested detail. Same with the trees and the road here. I kind of viewed the water and the mountain and the sky all as one shape in a way, just with this sort of transition of color and a slight value transition. And there's not a lot of detail in this painting, but you know, I did feel like including the bridge was important just because it's such a, you know, it's an important part of this particular view. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you'd like to see some extra videos and help support the channel, uh, there's a Patreon link down below. I've got a bunch of extra videos and a materials list, so check it out. Also, I will link Christina's uh, Instagram and her YouTube channel down below as well, so check that out. Other than that, stay creative, and I'll see you guys in the next video.